It all started when a victim reached out for help. She was desperately trying to escape her abusive trafficker, a man named Julian, and she claimed he was trafficking a large group of women for sex, including minors. The man she reached out to was Detective Patterson, a human trafficking investigator in Texas, and he is one of the best detectives I know, and he looks for these children as if they were his own. And when he started looking into the case, he discovered that Julian had a history of unthinkable violence. He had run over women with his car. He'd strangled girls until they passed out. He'd trapped them in his house, starved them, raped them. He even threatened to kill one girl's baby if she wouldn't work for him. He set a $1,500 a day quota for each girl, and if they came home without the money, he would beat them. He was easily making over a quarter of a million dollars a year. And if they ever asked him not to beat them, you know what he'd say? He'd say, if you would just listen to me, I wouldn't have to. Over the years, we've gotten glimpses into the many horrors that sex trafficking victims face every single day. We've seen girls kept in dog crates when they weren't with customers, and criminal organizations trafficking women internationally to thousands of buyers, both cases where artificial intelligence was successful in assisting in the rescue of victims and the takedown of exploiters, but Julian's case in particular demonstrates just how hard, if not impossible, it would have been to bring justice without the help of AI. I first confronted the reality of human trafficking when I was traveling through Eastern Europe at the age of 16. We, it was really a warm summer and the roads were dusty and we came to this tiny little one stoplight town and young children filled the street corners and the alleyways and some of them ran up to our car and pressed up against it, just trying to wash our car windows and make a little bit of money, but they had this feeling of desperation about them. And later, my friend told me, Emily, these children are trafficked by the mob to beg on the street. And if they don't bring home enough money each night to meet their daily quota, they'll be punished. And I was just blown away by this reality that children my age and much younger were being exploited like this. And when I returned to the US, I learned that human trafficking is a problem happening not just in Eastern Europe, but in every city in the world. At a young age, I learned that the world is not fair. That day in and day out, these young children are being exploited and have no one to bring justice for them. And at age 16, I knew I had to do something. Globally, sex trafficking is a $99 billion industry, and its victims are nothing like what we see on TV or in the movies. The typical victims of child sex trafficking in our country are foster children, runaways, children who don't have a strong family support system or who've been kicked out of the house. These children go missing every single day in our country, and they are the most vulnerable to sex trafficking. When I came to study at Carnegie Mellon, the sale of sex on the internet had exploded, and I spoke with local detectives here in Pittsburgh, and I learned that this massive amount of data online actually made it harder to find the true victims. And traffickers were capitalizing on this same technology, using it to make even more money and stay anonymous. And I thought, what if we could use this same technology for good?
to help victims. And so we embarked on the journey that became the foundation of my senior honors thesis and what ultimately motivated me to co-found Marinus Analytics and create Traffic Jam. Traffic Jam is an artificial intelligence-based software and it's for sex trafficking investigations. It's used by local, state, and federal law enforcement like the FBI across the United States and Canada and the United Kingdom. And the goal is to search the public web where these victims are advertised and then apply AI to this data to help law enforcement identify and recover victims and dismantle organized criminal networks. So the AI helps us save massive amounts of time on tasks that would otherwise be really, really difficult. So for instance, computer vision can identify the same pattern in many different photos, like the pattern on a hotel bedspread. And this helps law enforcement identify multiple victims advertised and sold from the same hotel room. Or machine learning classifiers that can learn from ads that we know involve victims of human trafficking, and then better classify which new ads are most likely to involve victims. And in 2017, we released the first facial recognition to identify victims of human trafficking called Face Search. And this actually brings us back to Detective Patterson because our technology gave him access to exactly the type of insights he needed to bring down that violent trafficker, Julian. You see, when Detective Patterson started looking into this case, he uncovered a much larger network of victims than he ever anticipated. And he was looking for one girl in particular named Sarah. Now, Sarah had been recruited by Julian when she was only 15. And the only piece of information that Detective Patterson had to even begin to try to find her was an old photo that was two years old. And he thought it was extremely unlikely that he'd be able to find anything with such an old photo, but he decided to run it through face search anyway. He scanned through those potential matches and he didn't see anyone who looked like Sarah. He thought he had hit another dead end in an already complex case, but he decided to do his due diligence and just double check those matches against other evidence from the case. And that's when he got his big break. He realized that one of the phone numbers linked to one of those matches was registered to Sarah's real legal name. And he looked back at the photo and he realized it actually was Sarah. He just hadn't been able to recognize her because of changes in her makeup and hair. And he was blown away that AI was able to recognize her even when he couldn't. And he probably never would have identified her without AI pointing out that match. In this way, he identified a total of 20 one victims that Julian had exploited. And he put together a case against Julian in three months that typically would have taken two years to put together, and now Julian is looking at life in prison. <laughs> so in this case, AI made the nearly impossible possible. And our system has enabled the success of many more cases like this. Uh, just last year, we saw nearly 3,000 victims identified using Traffic Jam. <laughs> and that's more than three times the number of people in this room today which is amazing, but this is just the start of what we can do and the impact that AI can have on our biggest societal problems because we can do more and we have to do more. From social worker case notes to data online showing the sale of opioids, government agencies are drowning in data but in these oceans of data, 
we see potential. My team is now working with the Allegheny County Department of Human Services right here in Pittsburgh to revolutionize the way that their social workers get insights out of thousands of pages of case notes. So the system we're building now will help get the right data to the right people at the right time, making sure that they are well prepared and empowered to spend less time manually sifting through data and more time on the ground with the communities they serve. These, great, yeah. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. These goals are greater than us all. To give people access to AI tools that revolutionize the way they work. AI that empowers them to bring justice for the vulnerable. AI that empowers us to change the world. Thank you.